show troop on board? Yes. Which car? This car, here. Well, wait a minute, they'll all be off. <laughs> Is this a McGonagall repertory troop? Uh-oh. Where's the great McGonagall? He isn't here, but I'm his daughter. Has anything happened? Not yet. But I have something here I'd like to give him. I'll see that he gets it. Not on your tintype. That's my job. Well, jail can't be any worse than this. Ah, the best thing this troop does is to get out of town just one jump ahead of the sheriff. Yeah, and I can't jump like I used to. What's wrong? What'd he do? Ain't what he did do, it's what he didn't do. Snuck out of his boarding house. Didn't pay his board bill. Didn't pay nothing. Nothing. Are you McGonagall? No. <laughs> Pardon me, just a little lung trouble. That's enough of that. Are you the great McGonagall? I am, sire. <laughs> then I have something to give you. Huh? There. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. oh, just what I've been waiting for. I thank you. Thanks for the light. Good evening, my happy little family. How are my little children at the theater? Mr. McGonagall, I've got to have some money. Yes, my lad, how much? Two dollars. If I had two dollars, I'd start a number two company. For two cents, I quit. Pay them off. Tickets, please. Two score and five Tickets. years ago, when I was playing Mahoney City... Ah, oh, good evening, sir. How do you do? I refer you to my amanuensis, Mr. Marmaduke Gump, our manager. I am the owner and the star. Excuse me, please. Tickets. Now, if you'll point out the members of your troop. Here's two. Here's three. Here's two. Here's four. What have you got under your foot, Pop? Well, under my foot? Foot? Nothing there. Nothing under there. The other foot? Other? My other foot? Oh. Oh, oh I'm glad you noticed that. What sharp eyes you have. Let's see, uh, my sleeping car ticket. Uh, I j must have dropped it. Here, I bought it for you. You, you go what? I bought for you this morning, dear. No, you didn't. Huh? I didn't buy it? I saw that man drop it. Man dropped it? Well, that's funny. Give I it back to him. Hmm? Give it back to him, Pop. Give it back? Oh, oh uh, are you sure he dropped it? Oh, well, then, of course, I, it'd be dishonest to keep it. I'll give it back, but I'd like to know where that one is I bought for you. I heard it. Why, uh, don't wait up for me, dear. I may play a little Pachisi before coming to bed. <coughs> I had a ticket. I think it was Upper Nine. Upper Nine. Is upper Nine made up? I'll see. George? Yes, sir. Upper Nine ready, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Get me the ladder, please, George. Yes, sir. Thank you, my boy. What 
That gentleman has upper nine. Maybe it was upper six. No, upper six is occupied. You don't think I'd lie to you about a ticket, do you? Hey, maybe this telegram will tell you who I am. J. Weldon Potter, Grand Mogul, the High Chamber Secret Order of the Vale Knights of Matthias. Quiet, please, quiet. What is this, a cattle car? Rat! Well, I had a ticket. Now, I, I, I'll take you. I'll get you one of these. Come on. Keep going. I'll just take you. I have a right to have a deal. Betty. And where do you think you're going? I'm going to Bellefontaine. Listen, Wally, you've got to stop following us around from town to town. Well, I'm not following us around. I'm following you. Well, you can't follow me either. Listen, Betty, I'm going to be an actor. I'm crazy about the theater and crazy about you, too. You're just crazy. You listen to me, young man. You're not going to get off at Bellefontaine. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You're going to stay on the train till you get back to college where you should have been a month ago, do you hear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Are you going to do what I say? No, ma'am. Oh, you're impossible. You're... you're a fool. Yes, ma'am. Belle Fontaine, boss. Mm. Belle Fontaine, boss. Uh, Bell who? Bell Fontaine. Oh, hello, Bell, dear. How are you? I'll leave two tickets to the box office for you. No, sir. Bell Fontaine, next stop. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, 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 so it is. Oh, uh, so it is. Oh, so I slept well last night. Going down there. Who is that? Who is it? What is this? Who is it? Who is it? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is the idea of walking around in my nightshirt? What's the idea of wearing a nightshirt big enough for people to walk around in? Get in your purse. I was when my face you stepped on. Face you stepped on. What are you, Chinese people? <laughs> you. Walking around, stepping on people's faces. I... I break your throat! What? You love... You... Ah! The idea... The idea of Why? Stepping on people. Was he talking to me? Poppy mm. stole my melon! You've been creating a lot of disturbance around here this morning. Uh -huh. You... Gangway, please, gangway. Good morning, gentlemen. I am the Greek Macalico. How do you do? Uh, you mind drawing your legs in? Thank you. Good morning, Marmaduke. Get my parade costume out. Immediately. Now, oh, pardon me. Rat. Thanks. Good morning, little bright eyes. I hope you're well this important morning. Fine, Pop. How are all of my little children with the theater this morning? Uh, that's what I thought. I have a telegram here. It will warm the cockles in your heart. I received it last night at Pocatello. The Greek Mechanical. America's leading tragedian. It's headed that way. Vein number 42. Upper Burr, uh, uh, 
Private car number three. Dear sir, in reply to your telegram, the advance sale indicates the, what the best business this theater has ever known. Signed, Sneed Hearn, the manager. I expect the populace down to greet us at the station. Possibly with a brass band. Oh. <laughs> city of Bellefontaine, words fail me in expressing our gratitude. Few of you realize the penalty of greatness to which myself and my company are martyr. During our peregrinations of the seven seas, we have always had a fond spot in our heart for dear old Bellefontaine. And in conclusion, I wish to thank you on behalf of myself, the great McGonagall. And on behalf of my daughter, Miss Betty McGonagall. And on behalf of the great McGonagall Company. <laughs> Your reception has touched my heart. The Opera House is sold out tonight, but for your benefit, I have ordered 100 more chairs. But remember, one and only one chair to each person. Bring me that thing. I hope I haven't disturbed you. Mrs. Wendell Schaefer, come down here. Uh, by the by, how is the good Mrs. Wendell Schaefer this morning? My dear Mrs. Wendell Schaefer, how will you look? I trust you're fit. Don't use the word trust around here, Mr. McGonagall. I hear it too often. I merely use it as a hyperbole. Now listen to me. After you've eaten my food and slept in my beds, not one piece of baggage goes out of here until you paid your bill. My dear Mrs. Wendelshaper, our unimpeachable integrity has never even been slightly questioned. Bertha, show them to their rooms. Yes, ma'am. And don't forget to count the towels. Yes, ma'am. Is the dining room open yet? No. Ah, my dear Bertha, how charming you look today. 
Well, you might as well pick up your bags. There ain't nobody gonna help you carry them upstairs. Have we any cigars? Yes, sir. Thanks. See if he has any matches. Thank you. Gee, it sure is swell out here. Nice view. You know, I like these little towns, seeing a new one every day. I hate them. Traveling with the girl you love? Wallace Livingston, will you talk sense? Well, I am. I mean, I, I do. You I'll... ought to be back at school, studying, making something of yourself. Betty, listen. I'll go back to school, if you'll go with me. You know that's impossible. Well, why? Because I don't belong there any more than you belong here. What do you mean? Well, I'm... In the first place, you're rich. Oh, my father is, but... Yes, and I know what rich people think of our profession. <sighs> you don't know my father. You wait till he hears about you barnstorming around the country with a rep show. Well, he might get mad. A little. Didn't give him too much soup, did you? Mm -mm. No, that's right. Give him plenty of bread and crackers. Uh-huh. And remember... Nobody gets a second helping of apple pie. Uh -uh. And we don't serve ice cream. Uh -huh. That's all you're supposed to know. Uh -huh. You better look out. Huh? Oh. Sit here, my little hourglass. For the benefit of all those who do not know me, I am the Greek mechanical. The soup sounds good. Thank you. Say. What did you tell us the Opera House was sold out for? Isn't it? No, it isn't. I just saw the manager and he told me up till last night they only had $17.30 in the box office. Quiet, Mr. Quiet. McGonagall, I want Take off your hat. Didn't you hear me tell those Gilpins I'd arranged for a hundred extra seats? Why, they went for it like a trout for a fly. Oh, fudge. Cease! Don't you use that sort of language before my innocent little daughter, or I shall be compelled to lay hands upon you. I... Hush! I don't... Sit down there and have some of that hot vegetable soup. Let us finish our repast in peace. And remember that every cloud has a silver lining. And every plate of vegetable soup is filled with vegetables. Oh, that's it. Oh, Mrs. Bundleshaper. First to tell me Mr. McGonagall is here. <laughs> Cleopatra oh. Pepperday, you're not going to make a fool of yourself again like you did last year, are you? Why, I don't know what you mean. I only want him to hear me sing. Sing? Oh, rats. Who's the old squidulum over there? That's that Pepperday woman. Who? Don't you remember how she pestered you last year? No, oh, I recall. He's all dressed up like a well-kept grave. Well, she's the richest woman in Belfontaine. Huh? The cloud with the silver lining. <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? Quick, 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 quick. Cleopatra Pepperday. Cleopatra Pepperday. Oh, um, Mr. McGonagall, I'm so glad My to dear you. Cleopatra oh, Paperday, oh, how I delighted I am to me. see you. Remember oh. you? How could I forget you? Oh, you how could anyone her. forget you? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGonagall. Will you sit down here? Oh, thank you. Thank you, dear. It is a pleasure, an honor, to break bread with you on this delightful afternoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. McGonagall. <laughs> oh, don't mess me up. 
Well, little man, you know who I am? Dada! Oh, <laughs> oh you have me wrong. His name's Albert, after his dear departed father. Yeah? Has a wonderful head. Oh, thank you, Mr. McGonagall. Shaped like a Rocky Ford cantaloupe. Esther! You gonna have him with us for dinner? <laughs> let me, let me, uh, please, let me help you. Uh, come on, dear. <laughs> come on! He's holding on to the floor. There we are. Hang on. Hang on. Look out here, I'm just going to help you in, that's all. Good, now put your foot over there. Yeah, no, no, the other, where's his other, can you see his other foot? Oh, here it is. Thank he's you. such a friendly little man. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh, there you are. Uh, now you're all right. Uh, uh, oh, 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 see this? Oh, now they have him here. There you are. Oh, there you are, <laughs> He has a mind of his own, hasn't he? Father. Yes, oh, stubborn oh, as can be. There you are. Look at that. Oh. There. Now, can anybody think me nicer than that? <laughs> Now, oh, come here. There. There, little man. Oh, Mr. McGonagall, I do hope you'll let me sing for you this year. You know, you were too busy when you were here last time. Yes, we were very proud, uh, very busy last season, yes. But you will let me sing for you this time. I've been looking forward to it for months. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Really? Oh, Albert, now you shouldn't have done that. Whatever possessed you? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGonagall, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Very well done. <coughs> Boy. Boy. I don't know whether to eat from the coat or from the plate. What you've done to Mr. McGonagall's watch. Oh! Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Mr. McGonagall. Oh, it's all right. It's such a impulsive nature, yeah. just like my own. Don't apologize. Oh, it's all does. right. It's just a little child. Oh, he does the all. cutest things. Yes, he oh, does. You should see him when no one's around. Mm -hmm. I'd like to catch him sometime when no or uh, see him sometime when no one's around. Oh, yeah. Albert, why did you do but that? But the minute hand won't be a bit of use after this. Mr. McGonagall, I hope he hasn't hurt your watch. Oh, no. How could you hurt a watch by dipping it in molasses? Oh, he's never done that before. <laughs> mm, I hope he doesn't do it again, Sorry. not with this watch. Oh, Mr. McGonagall, I hope you won't dislike my little Albert. It'll make me love the little nipper all the more. <laughs> <laughs> Brat. A brat. A B R A T. Brat. Albert, you mustn't do that. <laughs> naughty, naughty. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Don't, don't, don't apologize. <laughs> uh, I'm used to that sort of thing. <laughs> we stage folks get this all the time. <laughs> There's one of them newfangled horseless carriages coming. Do that. See me down the theater later. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. McGonagall, I'm all ready to sing for oh, you. Oh, fine. I've been waiting for it. Uh... Bertha, I'm ready. Yes, ma'am. See the horses carried? Oh, yes. All right, Bertha. 
Mr. McGonagall, you sit here. Please don't call me, mister. It's so formal. Call me Mark Anthony. <laughs> Mark for short. Oh, Marky. Oh, Marky. <laughs> you pierced my heart. Now, Bertha, not too fast. No, ma'am. And don't drown me. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Begin, Bertha. I wander today on the seashore. The winds and the waves were. And I thought of the days that are gone, Willie, many a year ago. Oh, those were the happiest days of all, Willie, not to care, not a sorrow did we know. Gathering up the shells from the seashore, gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, those were the happiest days in the ball, Willie. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Very good. I think. But that was a now we are growing old in years, Willie. Our hair is all silvered and gray. To the vows that we made on that day, Willie, are fresh as the smell of new mown hay. There still is a charm in those bright shells and the sound of the great ocean's roar. That's loud. But they bring back the day. Gathering up those shells from the shore. Very good, very good, excellent. Gathering up the shells from the sea shore. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, those were the happiest days in the ball, Gathering up the shells from the shore. Gathering up the shells from the sea shore. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, those were the happiest days of all, Willie. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Ah, uh, oh, you're really finished. Fine. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You make Jenny Lynn sound like a mangy alley cat with asthma. Oh, Marky, then you really think I can sing? Why, those last high notes are still ringing in my ear. Oh, Marky. Uh, will you sit down? Oh, thank you. My little Rocky Mountain canary. Oh. <laughs> oh, Marky, I feel like I'm sitting on top of the world. Well, I... Feels the same way, but I'm oh. not. Then you really think I will be a success? Oh, how can you fail with those silvery tones oh. and these oh. golden locks? <laughs> oh. oh, to think you would give me so much of your time when you are such a great artist. Oh, and it means so much to me, Marky. Well, it must mean a lot to you, dear. Oh. It means a lot to us all. Oh. I know you can't fail, my dear Cleopatra. Oh, call me. Call me your little Rocky Mountain Canary. Uh, oh. Rocky Mountain Canary. Oh, dear. Rocky Mountain Canary. Oh. <laughs> my... <laughs> my little Rocky Mountain... <laughs> Come out of here. Oh, Marky. Here. <laughs> yeah. oh. Quickly. We must hire ourselves to the opera house. Oh, yes. Quickly, dear. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh. 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 The old wren 
and couldn't pick her. Hey, little Rocky Mountain Canary. Rocky Mountain Goat. Are you trying to flim-flam that silly old fool? You can't do uh, English, uh, for staying. Rats. You can't do uh, English, uh, for staying. Um, uh, oh, oh, it's so scary. <laughs> you sure your son is here in Bellefontaine, Mr. Uh, Livingston? Yes, he came in with that theater troupe this morning. Is he a play actor? <laughs> He'd like to be one. Stage struck, huh? Mm. There's a Mrs. Pepperday here wanted to traipse off with that same McGonigal last year. But she's settled down since then. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm expecting to marry her. Last week in Kokomo, the house was sold out. Capacity house. 3,000 people turned away. Well, <laughs> oh, it's 2,000 anyway. Come on, girl. Flies get on her, you know. Come on, lady. Well, say, where will I find this McGonagall troupe? Over at the Opera House. I got a telegram to attach the show. I was just getting set to go over when you come in. Oh. You know, I don't monkey none with these fellas. I close them up like that. Hey, Sheriff. Here comes that actor fella riding with your girl. What? <laughs> Looks like he'd cut you out. Don't they make a handsome couple? <laughs> That'd be a hot time in the old town tonight, Sheriff. <laughs> Come on, Livingston. <laughs> this, my dear, is the future temple of your art. Oh, I'm so excited, Mr. McGonagall. Mm -hmm. Come, dear. Just fancy being escorted here by the great McGonagall himself. Uh, nothing, really nothing. Uh, of course, I usually have my second man do these things. Uh, come, Cleopatra, dear. Hello, you little lovebirds. <laughs> Proceed me, honey. Children, this is Miss Cleopatra Pepperday. She's going to join our happy little family of the theater. Oh, Mr. McGonagall. Ah, <laughs> hmm. uh, come, 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 folks. Now for the rehearsal. Come, dear. Now, children, on with the rehearsal. Dear Dick Bronson won't be here. He quit. The ungrateful coot. I can play his part, Mr. McGonagall. Anybody can play his part. Can you sing? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, did you ever hear the, the seashell song? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, I heard the sea shot. Uh, sing a rondelay. Thank you, sir. Yes, a little rondelay. One chorus. Here's one, Rolling in Love. I know that one. Mmm, that's pretty. Will you play that, please? All right. Nervous? <laughs> no. Good luck. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Charming, you're no Cinderella, you're just my girlfriend, and I'm just your fella. We're not living in a fairy tale or riding on a star, we're not afraid to call a spade a spade. At things exactly as they are, my darling. We're just poor folks. Won't you kindly break the news to your folks?
That's my son there, Sherry. That young fella singing? Say, he ain't bad at all. Can't keep quiet. Please leave the auditorium. What's she doing up there? Who? That's my girl, Cleo. Quiet, please, quiet. This is the great McGonagall speaking to you. Just got two bucks. Won't somebody lend us just a few bucks? With a few bucks, oh, we'll get license, we'll pay the preacher, and we'll keep on rolling in law. Very fine voice. Wonderful, wonderful. Of course, he can't hold a candle to yours there. Oh, Marky. <laughs> oh, Marky, are you hurt? Get hoited. Go, 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 go. Get some new drums for tonight. Yes, sir. Oh, Marky, are you hurt? No, I had the presence of mind to fall on my head. Go, go, folks, rehearsal, rehearsal quickly. Are, are you, you hurt? hurt? No. No, 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 and no. Part is yours. Oh, gee. Thanks, Mr. McGonagall. You won't regret it. I hope not. Wallace! Who's that? I beg your pardon. Have I the pleasure of your acquaintance? Uh, this is my father. Uh, Dad, uh, I'd like to have you meet uh, Miss Betty McGonagall and the great McGonagall. Fancy meeting you here in Belfontin. Ah! That to you, sir. And double. Uh, I'd like a word with and you. And a triple. Uh, 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 oh, you will? Oh, very well. I can give you about 15. That's all there. I need. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Now, mister, what can I do for you? I have a telegram here from your friend, the Sheriff of Cucamonga. Sheriff of Cucamonga? There's a thought. Grave error. Evidently for Ichabod McGonagall. Different family altogether. No relation. Often had many sticks. Uh, just a minute. Why, Walter, what is this? I have a telegram from Cucamonga to attach this show. Do you want this back? Uh, no. Then tear that up. But I'm a member of the great McGonagall Company. Spoken like a real trooper, my dear. Come, I shall rehearse you in your line. A pardonable error, sir. Oh, uh, uh, Dad, uh, Miss McGonagall is the leading lady with the show. Yes, I gathered as much. Excuse me, Wally. That wasn't very polite, Dad. No, and it wasn't intended to be. Oh, I Now, see here, young man. I want you to go back to college. Oh, uh, let's not go all over that again, Dad, huh? You don't understand. I want to stay here. Your place is in college. But I promised them I'd be in the show tonight. You what? Sure, I'm going to act here on the stage. I'll go tell Betty you're sorry. seeing Cleopatra Pepper Day making a fool of herself if it cost a dollar to get in. Seems like everybody in town had the same idea. Come, 
Mrs. Middleton. I'll find your husband if he's in New York. Jailhouse or no what? Here comes the prince. Here comes the prince. Here comes the prince. Now, can I see you? Now, now, now. What's the lowest you'll take for your rotten carcass now, you old rascal, you? What, well, Squire, what's the lowest? Uh, let me read that for you. What's the lowest? See? Oh, Give yeah, it the gesture. Sure. Give it the gesture, see? What's, what's the, the lowest way? you'll take for your old carcass now, you old rascal? <laughs> what's the lowest, lowest you'll take for your... What's the... the There goes the prince. That's the Another gilder sleeve. Uh, listen, Sheriff, can't you wait a bit? My girl's got a part in the show tonight. I can't help that. I didn't come all the way from New Philadelphia to see her. Well, well, my old friend, Sheriff Pretty Willie. How are all the Elks over in New Philadelphia? Most of them are waiting for the money you owe them. They are, eh? And I'm here to get it. Oh. Another valentine, eh? What are you up to now, Walter? Just an attachment on scenery, costumes, and box office receipts. Anything else? I'll be responsible for the amount. Uh, Cleo, you don't know what you're getting into. Don't do that, Cleo. Then don't interfere with my career. Cleo, that little investment of yours will garner you a million dollars. Here, take it back. Oh. Places, everybody, quickly. Come on. What's the lowest you'll take for your rotten carcass? Here comes oh. the prince. Who is that? That's my girl. She owns half the town. Ah. Oh. come from the cottage of the widow Wilson and her daughter. The widow and the child must quit the cottage. <laughs> Here comes the girl now. I must watch her closely. I have now nearly reached the old mansion house. In a few moments, I shall see this Edward Middleton, this dissipated collegian. Ah. I see a gentleman approaches. My fears tell me that this is the man I seek. I shall pause till he has reached the house. Good day, son of my old friend. I've been looking for you. Ah, Mr. Cribbs, any friends of my father are always welcome. Nobly said. I wish to speak to you with regard to the cottage you recently inherited from your late father. I have an opportunity of selling it. Why, I understand that a widow and her only daughter. Who are in arrears for rent. To turn them foot upon the world in the present condition of the old lady. In short, Mr. Cribbs, I cannot think of depriving them of a home dear to them as the apple of their eyes. You are pleased to be pleasant today, Mr. Middleton. Good day. Good day. <laughs> This, then, is the widow's daughter, nurtured in the wilderness. She knows not to the cold forms of the fashionable, miscalled world. Oh, stay, sir, I pray you. This is part of the rent which... Nay, dear girl, keep it as a portion of your dowry. Sir? Ah, little did I think, when I thought of selling that dear old cottage, that it should be regarded as a casket invaluable for the jewel which it contains. <laughs> Hide it again! Never mind! Hide it in the door! He's shot the deadly gun! Oh, save the deadly gun! Oh! Carl, oh, what are you doing now? Put it down! Cleo gonna act in this show. Oh, uh, uh, Cleo. Oh, uh, yes, um, yes, yes. Uh, she's probably going right after the epilogue. Uh, don't be impatient, dear. <laughs> don't be impatient. Oh, don't be impatient. 
Let you set foot on that stage. All he wants is your money, Mrs. Pepperday. <laughs> Here comes the prince. Precious. Julia, where's your mother, darling? Wine cures the cows. <laughs> Oh, Bill, I've had the most glorious time. Uh, you know, old Cribs. Father, <laughs> dear father. Edward, it's my mother. Mary. Oh, she is dead. Oh, horrors and I the cause. I cannot bear this. Let me fly. Edward, do not leave me. Edward, love, husband. Call me not husband. Curse me as your destroyer. Loose your arms. Leave me. Edward, brother. Father, father. Loose me. Leave me. Why must me down on fire? Madness is my strength. My brain is a good flame. Oh, free. Farewell forever. Oh, husband. Oh, heaven. Edward, my brother. Father, father. Say, don't look as if Kay Patrick was going to be in the show at all. Maybe she played the part of the dead mother. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> unearthly hour. I see you still persist in living in these squalid quarters. When last we met, I suggested a change. Heaven help me. Where would you have me go? Return to the village? I will not. 
I must remain and find my husband. He would laugh in his drunken ribaldry. Could he hear you speak thus? Most contemptible of earthborn creatures, it is false. Ah, my proud beauty, you are in my power. Tis leap. You are unfriended. <laughs> you'll take for your rotten carcass now. Curse you, I shall be revenged for this. If there is law, or just law, get out. Curse you! Kind, generous friend, how came you here so opportunely? And what of my poor husband? Come, Mrs. Middleton, I'll find him if he's in New York. Jailhouse or no jailhouse, watch house or no watch house. Uh, uh, just a minute, huh? Who plays this prince? Oh, you've run plus me for the moment. Uh, I have a very bad memory for names. Well, let me That's tell you, uh, she ain't going to put no uh, money back to this show unless she's in it. Fred, uh, Oh, oh, that's a foregone conclusion, yes. Uh, excuse me, one. All right, go ahead. To all of you who like to roam and leave your home behind, to all of you who've been around and found that fate has been unfair, to you, I say, though skies are gray, don't worry, pine or pray. There's always someone waiting, ready to forgive, ready to forget. When you find your friends untrue, and the world goes back on you. Who will always see you through? One little bit of heaven known as love. When you've had no luck at all, and your castle starts. of life has turned to bitter tears, whose little ponderous will vanish all your fears. God bless her. When adventure and its charm all have turned to Shall I rise the curtain, Governor? Rise it, yes, yes, rise it. Stop it, stop it! Stop it! 
May I speak to you a moment? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Miss McGonagall? Yes, Mr. Livingston. This is no life for my son. I know it. I've been trying to send him back to college for the past four weeks. You what? Yes, but he won't go. Hmm. Well, I think I've been wrong. I'm very sorry for what I said this afternoon. Yes, Wally told me. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you and I ought to work together on this thing. Oh, hello, Dad. How do you like the show? Isn't it great? Come on, Betty, we're on. Oh, God. You better get out in front, Dad, if you want to catch the rest of it. I'll see you later. Come on, Betty. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Livingston. Here comes the prince. This is the last act. If you ain't in that, you ain't in nothing. attraction for Bellefontaine only. The great McGonagall will entertain you with his extraordinary feats of legerdemain and conjuring, with which he has entertained and mystified the crowned heads of Europe. And don't forget, folks, tomorrow night, East Lynn, and now the great McGonagall. <laughs>
Chronicle. Great presenting company. Uh, 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 uh,
You will regret this in the morning. Oh, isn't this great, honey? Are you happy? Mm-hmm. I kind of wish Pop was here. Oh, he's all right. He's probably in New York by now. I know. I hope he'll take care of himself. I suppose New York is the ambition of every actor. Oh, it's always been Pop. Telegram well, ever from since I can remember. Oh, oh here. Yes, Mr. Boy. Yeah. Well, it's from Pop. What does he say? Gentlemen, it has been my great privilege many years ago, whilst traveling through the mountains of Paraguay, to find the Acme Indians drinking the juice out of the cacti. The only real cure for hoarseness known to medical science. I have here tonight a few bottles which I am selling for one dollar. It cures hoarseness. It'll cure the most stubborn case of hoarseness. I have been a martyr to the disease of hoarseness for many years. This malignant disease, whenever speaking in public as I do, and I depend on it, it cures hoarseness. It'll cure the most stubborn cases of hoarseness. One little sip of the bottle will cure them. It cures hoarseness! Only the first to buy 